to get out of Jap the Japanese culture, it was suppressing to me. It was not... Um, to me, it's... Gosh, um, the Japanese society gives people kind of pressure to to be uh, to be not so expressive. It's not that I am an expressive person, but I just felt uh, when I was growing up, growing up, just constant pressure to just keep it to yourself all the time in here, and it was suffocating to me. So I grew up watching uh, American movies, and um, and I've got a very good impression for American family and especially American father. Um, you know that tells something about my uh, uh, father in my you know uh, perspective, and. To me, uh, maybe getting married to an American man would be a good idea for my family, for my you know, immediate family that I was going to create, because it really seems like American dad just represent, uh, represent to me a um, very understanding, caring, warm uh, personality, and I like that. And, you know, society itself uh, seemed to be, in general, very uh, accepting to different kinds of people, different things, different cultures. To me, um, being in a totally different culture uh, was one thing, but I had to, uh, to cope with my uh, new life, which is marriage. And uh, I think maybe I did it a little bit too too big of a thing too too soon together. I was gonna do my stuff like a you know filing tax return and stuff, but well, partly because it was I I was emotionally affected. Uh, by the disaster, none of my family and friends got affected, but it was so, uh, it was huge to me, and I immediately, um, getting the mode that it's like, that's my focus for now, and something is happening to me at the energy level, and I just didn't know why I was feeling the way I'm feeling in my, you know, just being. And uh, I just needed to, to find out. And um, at that time, the, the only thing I could do is to watch the news. And I, I learned so much about how Japanese are. They don't scream, you know, they don't scream to be rescued right away, you know, uh, because they know that they're not the only one suffering. Mm -hmm. There are many other people around themselves uh, facing the same situation. So I respect that kind of, um, um, I guess that's a respect to, you know, one another. Just one, one tiny lady on the bed, the mobile bed, who was obviously uh, moving, being moved from one hospital to a rescue center or some, something. And she looks very fragile. Uh, she's very old. And she is utterly um, at the mercy of other people's care. And... I saw a woman 
being just like ready to receive ready to receive what whatever comes on her way and she was just saying thank you very much thank you very much but the way she was saying was really touching because when we say thank you um, we tend to um, it's really hard to say thank you by um, <clears throat> pure gratitude gratitude it's almost like if we if we receive we have to like almost apologize for our for my um, powerlessness or something you know but that she was there to just just receive and thank and um, she was graceful mm -hmm. and um, I thought that was beautiful. And I know that, you know, I myself and other people in America are um, having economic difficulties. And uh, so in times like this, we are challenged to give to other people, but by giving, uh, we are also receiving something in exchange. We are trying to connect, uh, and I think it's the, the sense of connection will be always with us. and. Uh, um, and you know it's um, just giving five dollars ten dollars uh, might be the the best thing you could do but I think it's important to to do it um, and uh, giving really is receiving. Um, the sense of connection is something that is very, very healing in nature. Mm -hmm.